Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and today I've got my April 2021 TBR video. So looking at the stack of books that I've got, I believe I've got nine books. Uh, four of them or three or four of them are full-length novels. In fact, most of them are full-length novels. I'm sorry. Uh, then a few of them are what are considered to be novelettes or novellas. I would say novelettes because they're in like the 45 to 50 page uh, range. So anyway, that being said, let's go ahead and get underway with this. So the first three books are books that I received from Silver Shamrock Publishing. Uh, they send books to me to review in exchange for an honest review, and that is what I do for them. Uh, and, and thank you guys for sending those to me. So if you guys are at Silver Shamrock or Washington, thank you. Uh, I'm a little tongue-tied today. I'm sorry about that. If I uh, trip, over my, trip over my words like I just did, uh, please bear with me. Uh, I'll try to do better next time. Anyway, uh, that being said, the first one up is the one I'm most looking forward to reading, and that is The Devil's Mistress. And this is by David Barclay. Uh, now on the back here, you got this strip going across where it's hard to read the synopsis, but I have remedied that. I have actually found the synopsis here on my Kindle. Virginia, 1705. Darkness has come to the town of Blackfriar. The beloved millwright John Ashford has been poisoned. His daughter Isabella stands trial for murder. Rumor has it that she consorted with the devil to do the deed, that she's become a witch. The worst thing, however, is what the townsfolk don't know. Isabella is innocent. After visiting the local enchantress for a simple love spell, her life is beset by catastro catastrophe. Her father turns up dead. Her sadistic fiancé spurns her. Now in shackles, Isabella faces torture and death. Her only friend, the enchantress. The old crone offers Isabella a new choice. Continue to suffer at the hands of her tormentors or become the very thing they fear. That sounds really good. I'm really looking forward to this. I've gotten to where I love reading books about witches, and this one sounds like one that is going to be right up my alley, so I'm really hoping this does not disappoint. All right, so that is The Devil's Mistress. All right, next up from Silver Shamrock. Oh, and by the way, let me mention to you that all the covers for the ones from Silver Shamrock are all awesome, and they were all done by Elder Lemon Design. Uh... I tell you right now, if I ever publish a book and I can get Elder Lemon Design to do my cover, I'm going for it because his work is just absolutely phenomenal, all right? All right, so the next one up, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, is by Russell James, and it's uh, Farallon, I believe it's Farallon Island. I hope I'm correct about that. And this one has the strip around it, too. It's a, uh, a not-for-resale strip, so... Hopefully I can read this one a little better than the other one. Nate Thalman wants to escape his life as a Prohibition-era bootlegger. He moves with his pregnant wife Alice to the Farallon Island Lighthouse, situated on a rocky islet 27 miles off the California coast. Joining three other keepers and their families, he hopes for peace and a deep reconnection with his wife. But one of the keeper's children finds a secret cave and releases a malicious entity imprisoned within. It possesses a former keeper, and soon the islanders are being stalked and slaughtered. The demon within the keeper plans within the keeper plans to only leave Alice alive, at least until she's given birth to her child, who will become the demon's permanent vessel. With no radio, no resupply, and no weapons, it is up to Nate to keep the wife and, and un, to keep his wife and unborn child safe. But the body hopping fiend seems to always be one step and one corpse ahead of him. Will anyone survive ra the wrath of the demon of Farallon Island? All right, and that is Farallon Island. The other one sounds really good. Uh, last but not least, from Silver Shamrock Publishing, we have got From Death Reborn, and this is by Kenneth W. Kane. In the spaces between heaven and hell, there is the unlife, a place where all beings are put are but pieces on a chessboard. Influenced by greed and power and love, each individual must face their own challenges and exert their own free will as they see fit. No one, not even God or the devil, can do anything but try to curb what goes on there. 
Follow Nathan and Clay as they battle their way through several of the many realms of hell on a collision course with the unknown. There in the unlife, everything will change. Everyone, 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 one will change. I think that's a typo. And a new being will be born. But will it be for the best or will evil prevail? And that is from Death Reborn. All right. All right. The holdovers that I've got are from Aaron Beauregard, and this is yellow. Oliver Fitch has a troubling issue. He lives in a state of constant terror. After purchasing a convenience store in a once civil society, the streets around him have rapidly devolved into utter lawlessness. They're now festering with sinister gutter scum that only live to harass and intimidate him. His pathetic profits are gouged under the threat of violence, and there isn't a damn thing he can do about it. Because in a city with no rules, where the sun never shines, the authorities are no help. In fact, they're an equal part of the problem. The relentless fear of conf confrontation is so obvious that even Oliver's wife Lydia has grown to, re to resent his spineless existence. The absence of bravado opens the door to a horrific home invasion that leaves a miserable pair savagely maimed. From there, things only get worse until the criminal leeches have taken everything, until there's nothing left inside but hate and the gnawing hunger for revenge, until a switch finally flips and Oliver, Oliver realizes that they all have to die. That is Yellow by Aaron Beauregard. I've heard this is pretty extreme as far as uh, horror is concerned, so bring it on. Uh, of course, I probably shouldn't say that because the last extreme horror book I read was Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. And uh, yeah, less said about that book, the better. Uh, next up is a collection of stories by Dimas uh, Rio, and this is Who's There? A woman went missing a week before her wedding, a man recalling his nightmarish encounter with the devil, a letter sent from beyond the grave, a call from loved ones who since have passed, limbs that have a mind of their own. These ghastly tales of revenge, greed, and desperation writhe and squirm in the dark corners of modern-day Indonesia. Rich in cultural, under, cultural undertones that are uniquely Asian, these stories are an equal part grotesque and poetic, irreverent, Irreverent and spiritual, unusual and universal. Drawing on local folk tales of vengeful banshees, dust-dwelling monsters, and other forms of the undead, this collection of five short stories will transport readers to the deep, dark abyss where demon, for, demon forever resides, the human mind. And that is Who's There? All right, the final holdover from March... Cruel Summer by Wesley Southard. That is a funky cover. Would you want to run into this in the dark? I wouldn't. I know that much. And I think these things come from, if I'm remembering right, if I remember the plot of this or the synopsis, and I will read it, these things actually come from the sea, I believe. I may be wrong. But would you want to be swimming and all of a sudden this comes up from the darkness or the depths right at your face? Yeah, no way. Uh-uh. Melissa Braun is a broken woman, only wanting what's best for her family. She's willing to do whatever it takes to mend her fractured relationship with her abusive boyfriend. In a last-ditch effort, she hopes the sun and sand of a much-needed Florida vacation will bring them and her son closer together. Patrick Braun is a demoralized kid, quiet and sullen. He only wants his mother to see her boyfriend's torment as it cripples everything he loves. After years of silence, he refuses to stand by and let the abuse continue to tear them apart. Hoyt Rainey is a vile man, unable to keep his hands to himself. He finally takes his anger one step too far. Only this time he finds himself on the receiving end of his own punishment. Down and down he goes, plunging deeper into the dark blue abyss of the sea. Melissa and Patrick finally believe they are safe. The trouble now behind them for good. They are wrong. Gods never really stay dead. They only lie in wait. And when a beast as old as time discovers Hoyt, he too won't stay gone for long. The nights grow darker, the water flows colder, and the cruelty of summer lives on. That is Cruel Summer by Wesley Southard. Alrighty, got three more here. 
This one was sent to me by um, Speculative Magpie. Uh, and, uh, she had this on her unhaul pile. She'd reviewed it and I, I, I liked the way it sounded. So I said, Hey, if you're going to unhaul it, you know, she said, yes, I could send it to you. So she did. So thank you for that speculative magpie. Um, and, uh, anyway, I'm talking about Merciless by Brian Smith. Sucko newlyweds Grant and Lindsay Weatherby are true crime junkies with a thirst to know what it feels like to kill for real. Young, prosperous, and good-looking, they are seen by friends and family as the perfect couple. No one sees the dark side to their love. After their wedding, they embark on a trip across the country. As their honeymoon gift to each other, they plan to abduct, torture, and kill a stranger. But what was planned as a controlled one-time event soon explodes into a spiraling orgy of bloody, nightmarish violence and depravity. That is Merciless by Brian Smith. And that's a funky cover there, too. I don't know if you can see it. It's like, here she is and here he is, and they're both covered in blood. Yeah, pretty nasty shit, man. All right. Uh, next, I got two more here. And these are the novelettes. Uh, the first one, this was sent to me by uh, Sion Das. And uh, this is called Nang Nang Tanai or Nang Tane. Uh, says she takes her vengeance in blood. That is a nasty freaking cover. Yeah, Sion, man, he comes up with some wild ones. He's recommended some wild ones to me, and he sent this to me. So thank you, Sion. Anyway, this is by Lee Franklin. Celebrating his 21st birthday in Thailand with his best mate Paul, Shane finds the perfect tattoo of local deity Nang Tanai. He must have her at all cost. When Nang Tanai is unleashed, she comes with vengeance. Shane will learn that sins, like tattoos, cannot be washed away, not even with blood. Nang Tanai. Right. And last but not least, from fellow booktuber, YouTuber, uh, he's might as well call him an author tuber too because he writes. He's an awesome writer. This is from Nicholas Gray, and this is the Field of Fiends. All right, and Nick is known as Spooky Noodles here on uh, here on YouTube or BookTube, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, a group of boys go out into the Excuse me. A group of boys go out into the cereal field to play an innocent game of flashlight tag, but something is lurking in the field with them, and it's ready to tear the boys apart. Will the boys escape with their bodies intact, or will the field of fiends hide their corpses for someone else to stumble over? Anyway, that is Field of Fiends. And some, like I said, it's a novelette. It's about 45, 50 pages. All right, so that's going to do it. That is my April TVR. Uh... Okay, so last I checked on my channel, I have got 894 subscribers. A couple of people have unsubscribed, but that's okay. Uh, they may be bots, or this might not be what they're looking for. But anyway, uh, I am really wanting to reach 900. So if you like this channel, then please, by all means, hit the subscribe button. If you like my videos, hit the thumbs up. And like I said in a previous video, uh, if you feel like commenting, please comment. I will answer your comments in the best way that I know how. Um, like I said, I think I've only not answered two or three people, mainly because they were trolls, okay? And I'm not going to give them the time of day. All right, so there you go. Uh, anyway, this is going to post on Tuesday afternoon, the 30th. Yes, the 30th of March. So until then, thank you guys for watching. And be safe out there. Bye-bye.